In this presentation, I'm going to show you a few of the hotkeys and workflows that I use inside of Maya all the time. All these hotkeys are documented, but they're pretty buried, so I figured it was a good idea to make a Maya 101 video that just showed a few of the more powerful uh, hotkeys that, that I, I find very useful. So what we want to do is we want to model a few fingers sticking out off of this, uh, off of this polygon cube. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and right mouse click on top of it to go ahead and grab a couple faces. So I'll hold down my shift key to add to my selection. And I want to extrude these faces, so if I shift right mouse click on top of the, the selected object, I get the option to start performing some polygon um, operations on it. In this case, we're going to use the extrude face command. So if we extrude these faces out, and then we scale them down a little bit, you'll notice that they're all scaling sort of as a group. And we want to have three individual fingers. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and just throw that keep faces together command to the zero to turn it off, and I get unique faces that have now been extruded out. If I hit the G key, which is one of the most powerful hotkeys inside of Maya, you're going to hit this guy all the time. It repeats the last command that you just did. So in this case, it's going to extrude another uh, group of faces out. Maybe we'll scale those guys up a little bit. We'll hit that G key one more time. We'll kind of continue out, drop them down a little bit, and we'll finish off by extruding out where the fingertips will be. And we'll just puff those guys up nice and fat, something sort of like that. So now that I've got a, a base shape here, I want to refine this a little bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the smooth command to do that. So this is just going to subdivide that out, and we'll, we'll give it a few more divisions so that it has quite a few faces inside of there. So the next hotkey I want to talk about is the Y key. What Y does is it repeats the last tool. So G does the last command, and Y does the last tool. If you look in your toolbar, you'll always get a visual icon as to what the last tool was that you used. So this means that if I hit the Y key, it'll immediately jump me into the Sculpt Surface uh, Geometry tool. So if I have my piece of geometry selected, and I simply hit that Y key, you can see that I've now jumped into that Sculpt Surface tool. If I hold down my B key in any of the painting tools, it allows me to brush, uh, adjust the, B, the brush size by holding B and dragging with my left mouse button. And if I hold down the Control key, you'll see that that Y arrow flips to the inverse. So Control does the opposite action. So if I wanted to sculpt maybe up the hand back here a little bit, something like that, or maybe start to add a little bit of detail where the knuckle might be. So we'll shrink that brush down, maybe hold the control key and kind of sculpt it up across there, maybe drop it down and put a little wrinkle somewhere in there. If I hold down the shift key, it allows me to start to do some simple smoothing operations. So a couple of keyboard hotkeys in conjunction with the Sculpt Surface tool really allows you to, uh, to work directly uh, without going into the tool options to sort of modify the way that tool is behaving slightly. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and position these fingers out a little bit. So I'm just going to grab a vert. And let's actually we'll just grab a face. We'll grab these faces here. And if I hold down my control key while I um, right mouse click on top of this, you can see that I get this nice pop up that allows me to grow my selection really quickly. So we'll just sort of grow that selection out a few times. The nice thing about this is I can hit that G key to repeat that last command, which is a grow select command. So I just sort of quickly grew my selection out on these fingers. And what I want to do is I want to begin positioning these and rotating these around a little bit. So if we jump into our rotate tool, you'll notice that the pivot isn't really where I want to rotate around. I want to rotate sort of back around here. So if I just hold down the D key and keep it clicked down, it allows me to reposition that pivot and go in here and just start to adjust the overall positioning of that hand. So it's a really simple little tool, that D, T, D hot key, but it really does um, give you the functionality of just quickly entering into the set pivot. The other way to get to that tool is to use the insert key, or, but I, I kind of find the D, the D key a little bit uh, more efficient. So you just need to keep it held down while you're trying to work with it. So the next tool that we want to talk about is the direct manipulation tool. And this one's really cool. You'll notice that if we look at the hand here, it's been built up through a series of extrudes and that poly smooth. At any time I can go back into these extrudes and if I hit the T key, it takes me into the direct manipulator tool. So this allows me to go back into the, into the history of this hand and start adjusting what happened with that extrusion directly as though I was still in that tool. So again, it allows you to really quickly jump through the tool. You just hit the T key, it brings you back into that command. So if I wanted to maybe scale those fingers down a little bit, I have that functionality. So the other thing that's kind of nice about the, the direct manipulation tool or hitting the T key to get to that is it also works really great with lights. So let's go ahead and look at our lights. And, and lots, of, lots of modeling options and manipulators inside of Maya benefit from this direct manipulation tool or hitting the T tool. So if we sort of zoom out here, you can see I have the spotlight. 
that's uh, framing it on this hand here. And if I hit the T tool while I have that spotlight active, I go into the direct manip manipulation tool, and you can see it gives me sort of an aim and a back body to the light, as well as the ability to start toggling through different things like the cone angle for that light, as well as the penumbra for that light. So all this control over how that light's interacting with my environment, um, I can kind of cycle through the different options that would be available inside of the attribute editor directly in the 3D viewport. So those are a few of the hotkeys that I use all the time when working inside of Maya. The G key to repeat the last command, the Y key to repeat the last tool, the T key to jump into that direct manipulation tool, as well as a couple of the cording operations that you can use when working with, um, when working with the sculpting tool. So holding the control key down to inverse the operation of the sculpting tool and the shift key to in, enter into the smooth mode. So hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. Again, it's a very basic thing, but these are the, these are the, the few hotkeys that are that are super useful for me and I, and I hope you guys all benefit from them also.